Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a 9400 GT from NVIDIA. It's a card that pops up in my suggestion box quite often and one that seems to retail for a lot more than similar cards of the same age. I don't know why but what I do know is that I've been excited to test one out for a while. Launched in 2008 for as little as $59, this was an entry level solution that came in a few memory variants including 256MB, 512MB and 1GB with this one sporting 1 gig of DDR2, although there is a 256 meg GDDR3 version that would have been a little faster. The 1 gig option was unnecessary for a budget card of the time and was likely a marketing gimmick, similar to how some low end cards today have totally unneeded amounts of VRAM. Other specs include just 16 CUDA cores, a 550MHz clock speed and a 350MHz memory speed, with a 300W PSU being recommended. Having no external 6-pin requirement means that you could probably run it with a much weaker one, making this an ideal video adapter for a low power and small form factor PC. As for gaming, it lacks DX11 support for modern titles, but how does it hold up against some of the latest and most demanding DirectX 10 games available? I've paired it with a Ryzen 3 1200, although even a fast Core 2 Duo would allow this thing to reach its maximum potential. Let's test some games. So it was time to take to the water first with Assassin's Creed Black Flag. This is a pretty tense and system straining level as you can probably tell by the solid 10 FPS that we were almost able to maintain with the low settings at 800 by 600 Being a passively cooled card though it stayed very quiet, leaving me to enjoy my Assassin's Creed experience in peace, albeit with a slightly lower frame rate than I'm used to. Temperature wise it idled at 54 degrees, heating up to a toasty 81, which is inevitable because of passive cooling, but it meant that any overclocking attempt was futile. Some of you also ask me why MSI Afterburner says D3D11 in the top corner when I test DX10 cards or below, and I think, but don't quote me on this, it's because the D3D11 runtime is able to run on DX9 and 10 hardware using feature levels, meaning that some features of DX11, like better resource management, can be used on older hardware without the full support of the newer API. If someone can explain that better down below, please do as I'd love to know. We tried Bioshock Infinite next with 640x480 resolution and the very low preset. While the game did average out at 30fps, stuttering and frame drops made it pretty much unplayable, although the low res didn't really bother me that much. But let's move on to Battlefield Bad Company 2. A surprising result here and after I accidentally wiped out my whole team with a misplaced trajectory, the action started heating up and we were seeing a delightful 30 FPS average on this snowy level. The game slowed a little as to be expected, even at 1024x768, but the experience was definitely an acceptable one. The same goes for CSGO. Despite what is probably the worst Counter-Strike gameplay you may have ever seen, at 1280x720, 40 FPS was the average. That may not be enough for most competitive players out there, but if you have an old card like this, then you can still enjoy this multiplayer game. But bear in mind it is more CPU intensive, so results may vary across different hardware. I've tested quite a few games today and one of my favourites is Fallout New Vegas. Here at 720p once again, we averaged out at 33 FPS. I was pretty pleased with this because if you've ever played this on console, you'll know it runs about the same and if you've sunk hours into it on 360 or PS3, you should have no problem doing so with a 9400 GT. I decided to round things off with two GTA games, 4 and 5. With 4, the notoriously unoptimised one of the two, most of the time the game ran at around 20 FPS. Better than I thought, but everything is turned down here, including the resolution at 800 by 600 The same goes for GTA 5, where you'll see a similar result. An average of 20 FPS once again here, and an identical resolution to go with it. 5 has less stutter overall, but neither of the games are what I'd call playable on this GPU. You will however be able to enjoy older and less demanding games without too many issues. Thing is, putting a card up against games that wouldn't have existed when it came out make it more interesting because it allows us to conduct the ultimate test of time and longevity. Do you have a 9400 GT in your system or have you ever used one? Let me know down below as well as leaving a like if you enjoyed it, a dislike if you didn't and clicking subscribe if you want to of course. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.